Buenos dias. Bonjour. Oh, how good I must. Es lunes. New som lundi. Gets yo yo. It is metacognition Monday. I'm telling you how your brain works. And I have been telling you how your brain works learning language. And we're, we're looking at a bunch of different techniques for learning language. All right, so today, today we're going to talk about total physical response. And again, all these methods are things that we use in class. I use a little bit of everything. Total physical response, think of it like Simon says. All right, so the core tenets are that listening comprehension is the most important. Remember, for everything we do, can you read it? Can you write it? Can you speak it? Can you hear it? Total Physical Response, TPR, believes that listening comprehension is the most important of those. And it takes advantage of, or it leans into, the silent period. Remember, the silent period is that first stages of language acquisition when either you're just kind of processing all the information or um, you're overwhelmed by all the in information and just can't make an utterance or you're just too shy to make an utterance because your effective filter is too high. So this is going to take advantage of the silent period. Okay, so um, if you were in class, we'd be doing this in class, but um, obviously I'm recording this for you, so it's a remote situation. So this is how it's going to go. All right, I would call for four volunteers to come to the front of the class. And everybody else in the class, assuming class of 30, there's 26 of you just listening and watching passively as I give our volunteers commands, okay? And then I do it with you, all right? So I'll say, like, um, stand up, sit down, turn around, uh, touch your toes, whatever I say, okay? I'm doing it with you, but I'm giving you commands, and I'm maybe only giving you five or six commands, all right? And then I say, keep going, and I don't do it. I stop doing it, and I see how much that you four volunteers remember. And then I have everyone in the class get up and do it with you. Okay, I'm still saying the commands. I'm just not doing it along anymore. So this is kind of that idea of I do, um, we do, you do. So I start by modeling it. And then um, we all do it together. And then I'm not doing it anymore. I'm just watching you guys do it. Okay, then I get new volunteers and I have some new stuff. Okay, um, this new stuff is, is totally new. Um, my examples here, I've got uh, point, point to the door, point to the table, walk to the door, um, touch the door that kind of stuff. All right. So we go over those and this is more than once. Okay. So I do this a hundred times. Okay. Not a hundred times, but many, many, many times until I'm sure that the volunteers understand each of the directions. And then of course, lather, rinse, and repeat. Then I have, then I sit back and just the volunteers do it and everyone's just watching the volunteers. And then I have everyone do it. Okay. Here's the everybody now slide. All right for new volunteers. And this time we do what's called novel commands. Okay, novel means new. And these aren't necessarily new, it's just that we're taking the words and we're putting them together in weird ways. Okay, like maybe I had jump and now I'm saying jump to the table. Um, walk and jump to the table, whatever. Whatever I do, I'm putting them together in weird ways. Okay, so you know, earlier I had point at the table um, point at the door, and maybe I've got like, uh, I don't know, point at the teacher or something that you haven't heard before. We're just putting stuff together differently. All right. And then after we've done this for an hour, then I write down the commands on the board and you copy them down. So it's only at that point that you're getting the reading and the writing portion. Because remember, everything is reading, writing, speaking, and listening. You haven't spoken at all in this class yet, okay? And then we can build on it. We do action sequences that go together, okay? I think everyone's favorite is making a sandwich. Take out the bread, take out the butter, 
take out the mayonnaise, put the mayonnaise on the bread, you know, whatever, and just like one by one. But here's like making a, take out a pen, take out a piece of paper, write a letter. So you're pretending to write a letter, fold the letter, put it in an envelope, seal the envelope, write the address on the envelope, put a stamp on the envelope and mail the envelope. All right. So, um, a lot of people really love this method and you will find you've ever since kindergarten, you've seen this method, total physical response, sneaking into math class, sneaking into social studies class, sneaking into, um, there's like a watered down version of it where people think as long as you're moving your hands, that it counts as the kinesthetic movement. And yes, that's true to an extent, but it's a really watered down version you've been doing up till high school now. Okay. So as far as language acquisition goes, this is really fun. Um, we do it a lot, but generally I don't have you be quiet while we're doing it. Generally, I, I like to sprinkle in, um, you repeating after me because I feel like that's important. Um, the big question is how much language can be taught with imperatives? Okay. With the command forms. All right. So you can say, walk to the board. Oh, and now I've got an if then, if Ingrid walked to the board, stand up. There's another command. Ingrid, write your name. Okay, if Ingrid wrote her name, sit down. Okay, that kind of thing. And sometimes when it gets to the higher levels, it gets really silly and it's like a real stretch. Okay, like I wrote dignity on a card one time. Okay, all right, walk to dignity, pick up dignity, rip up dignity and stomp on it. Okay, so now the students knew the word dignity, but they didn't really know it in context. They knew it was a word, but it wasn't really connected to anything. All right. And then the next issue that we have is that some languages have special imperative forms that are only used in certain contexts. Okay. My Japanese students. All right. You've probably seen the te form by now. I hope you hope I've shown you the te form by now. So the te form is used to connect verbs to other verbs. Okay. And here it is as a command form. Matte kudasai. Please wait. Here's a different command. This one's really rude. This is like, wait, you sucker. Mate, okay, machinasai, hold up, okay, machitamaya, an old person would say this, all right. French students, you've heard me say soissage or soyessage, okay, so be good, all right, but this is the subjunctive tense, and um, chances are, unless you're in Francais quatre, I haven't taught you the subjunctive tense at all because it's a crazy tense, okay. If I was going to teach you the subjunctive tense, I would say if I were going to teach you the subjunctive tense, because we are stopping using it in English, and so it's hard for us to wrap our brains around it. Estudiantes de Español. You've heard me say hablan en Español. It's not hablan, it's hablen in the command form, but it's only used in the command form like this. You're never going to hear it any, any other place. So in some respects, if I use nothing but TPR, you're only hearing the command forms. And so when you go to reproduce them, you can only reproduce the command forms. So I love TPR, total physical response. Did I say TPR is a total physical? There's too many acronyms in this language, huh? Okay. Um, I love the method to pieces, but I pick and choose what parts I use of it as with all the methods that I'm explaining to you. Everything has good points. And I'm a weird person, so I use them in weird ways. All right, next method.